Lord to Jesus. We greet everyone. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to kindly invite you to stand up. We do this in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. That we're going to read tonight in the Old Testament, Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter five. It's a text a well known of everyone. Second Kings, chapter five. Verse 13 that is here on the projection. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he says to you, wash and be clean. The brethren may be seated. May the Lord bless the explanation of his word. In summary, the word, of, the word tonight it comes to tell us that God's asking us simple things, easy, to do in us glorious things, wonderful things. And the example of this is in the life and in the experience that this man, he went through. The word says, I'm just going to remind you that Naaman was the commander of an army of the king of Syria. Naaman, therefore, was a man who had stripes. He was a general. He was an important man in the society in which he was inserted, in which he lived that had a couple of characteristics. A great man before his Lord, very well respected. He was a man, uh, a man of valor, according to the Bible. But the Bible says, however, Naaman was, had leprosy. So whoever looked at him we no longer see him as a general of a man of res re uh, respectful man but, or a man that had his valor but they would see Naaman as a leopard and if you take a biblical dictionary or any reference about Naaman in the past there was there were two types of leprosy. One that was contagious, where whoever was uh, afflicted by this infirmity was set apart from the society and remains isolated from the city or the town. And there was another one that was not. So Naaman was inside of his own house. But everything that Naaman had, everything that he was, according to the situation, I'm sure of it, made him a man that was sad because infirmity, amongst many things, it brings men to sadness. And the greatest desire that he had, surely, was to be free of this affliction, to be uh, out of this situation. 
But it's important that we say here that we live here. But this place is not heaven. And in this world in which we live, how many times we are brought to experience situations that are adverse, difficult moments, and our entire desire is to get rid of them, that there is a solution that we may find a way out of those moments so that everything goes well, that everything returns to its normalcy. And Naaman, surely, he desired this. And the Lord places a, a, a little a, a young lady on his house to tell his wife, I wish that my Lord was before the prophet who is living in Samaria because he, that prophet would restore him of, uh, of his leprosy. And those words that were brought to Naaman and he placed on these this words, he placed his hope. He saw in this an opportunity to get rid of this illness and to have joy once again and to serve his, his leaders in a different way. In my brethren, the Lord has given to men and why not to say, given us many opportunities so that the sadness may not make dwelling in our hearts and that the problems that to many, many times may feel difficult to be resolved placed before him on his altar he can do all things the Lord told a servant here tonight that she needs to rest on him those words that were brought to Naaman and Naaman as a man he goes to his king and asks for a letter to the king, king of Samaria, of Samaria. And then he gathers a few things which were material things that were going to be gifts. So he, gets, he gets a letter from the king of Israel and he brings this letter and, and ten cycles of, of gold and silver and uh, some garments, ten uh, garments, and then he, I'm going to get in front of this prophet, he was going to call upon his king, uh, upon his God, and then he's going to place his hand on me, then I'm going to be healed, and I'm going to pay him, I'm going to offer gifts to him, and now bringing this understanding to our days, this is the gospel that is being preached out there. When you give, then you receive. That's what is being preached out there. But the Bible says the opposite. What you receive really, then you have to give really. Because the one who operates is not man. The one who delivers is not man who saves. It's not man. The one who transforms is not man. But the one who does the work in man's heart is God. That's why the Bible says, to him may be given all the honor and glory and praise. But Naaman, he goes with this, this thought. He goes out with his purpose. And then when he comes to the king of Israel, he then says, am I a man to uh, kill or bring uh, glory to someone? So those words from the king of Israel and the arrival of Naaman in Samaria, they, they were, this, those news were brought to prophet Elisha. Now, just want to remind you is that the prophet is not the one who, that speaks about himself. The prophet is the one who speaks about God. I'm going to give you this introduction so that we can come to the verse we read. So then Elisha told the king, hey, tell Naaman to come here to come here to my presence. Tell him to come here. 
because surely he will know that there is a God here in Israel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Naaman, we, his committee, he goes to the house of the prophet. And then he goes there with a thought. When I arrive there, the prophet will, will be there. He's going to come out and receive me. He's going to call upon his God. And he's going to place his hand on my infirmity and I will be healed. And everything will be all right. However, my brethren, our thoughts are not God's thoughts. The Bible says that. And I'm going to tell you, blessed be the name of the Lord, that God's thoughts are higher and more elevated than ours. They are more wonderful than, than ours. And the prophet didn't, does not even leave his house. He sent his servant, go out there and tell Naaman that he, he needs to go to the Jordan River and uh, and dive seven times and on the seventh time he will, he will be purified and the word was the word from the prophet no the word from, was from God and how many times you come here to this place and I come to this place and God has a word using one of the servants the word is not from the servant a word comes from God telling you, hey, do not be afraid. Telling, telling you, I am with you. Telling you just one thing, believe. Believe. That, that was the word. And you know what happened? The general was outraged. And he said, isn't is not in my own land in, in, in Damascus rivers when crystal clear waters like uh, Havana for pop because Jordan River was uh, was a muddy river with stone stony river should I not have gone to my own rivers and be purified now we come to this the the, the Bible verse that we just read however there were men here that had gone with Naaman. And those men, they say to Naaman the following, My Lord, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, would you not have done it? Now, now even this, which is simple, which is go to bathe on the Jordan River seven times in order for you to have a blessing of being clean, to be delivered from this ill that you desire so much to be free from. And now I want to leave a message to the church. The Lord asks things that are very simple for us to do. For us to see His glory being manifested many times. You just have to believe. If you, if you believe, you see the glory of God. And many times, you just listen to answer, to obey, to seek the Lord on early dawn, proclaim a consecration, consult the Lord. The Lord asks us to do simple things in order to perform glorious things in our lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord that this man he was had sense was touched by that message. Then he bathed once, twice. Now let me skip. On the seventh time, his skin was like the skin of a baby. He was purified because he gave creed not to the word of the prophet, but to the word of God. He was sensitive the word of the ones who were with him the God had asked him through the mouth of the prophet something that was very simple now let me uh, like to close this message in short message saying the following has God asked you something difficult has God asked, asked something difficult to me to us 
in order for us to be blessed, in order for us to be enriched, in order for us to have our homes blessed and our family blessed? Has God asked for something difficult? And the answer is no. God asks us simple things in order to perform in us glorious things. Amen. So now let's go a little forward. After well, it was purified, he goes back to the house of the prophet. And what was the desire of Naaman? To give the gifts that he brought to Elisha. Now I ask you, didn't Elisha accept? No. Because I'm going to say the following. The honor, the glory was not Elisha's. The honor and glory belong to God. Belongs to God. And my brethren, the Bible says the following. You have been purchased with by a, a high price. It was the blood of Jesus. Don't make servants of men. We are servants of God. Of a God that is saying, my servant, if you believe, you will see my glory. Of a God that is saying, do not be afraid. I am with you. Of a God that is saying, walk, pray, consecrate yourself. Seek me on early dawn because just be faithful. And in everything that the Lord has asked of us, which is so simple, He has done things, wonderful things, glorious. Because asks simple things of us in order to perform wonderful things in our lives. Never forget this.
Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. 35 anos atrás, eu fui enviado a uma igreja. to be a pastor on this church. It was my first church. And there, I was um, approached by a sheep, and she said, Pastor, Pastor, I cannot stand it anymore. The situation of my marriage, uh, my relationship with my husband is very difficult. He is a drunk a very advanced stage stage of alcoholism and he lost his job and he uh, stands stays the whole night and uh, on a bar and uh, goes all the night on a bar as well many times he gets home and he wakes me up in order for me to prepare some food for him and I can't no longer withstand this. And now I ask you, you who are listening to me, what can I say to a person like this, in a situation like this? At the moment, the Lord gave me a revelation. Ask a question. According to the ans her answer, bring a word to her. Now I asked her, my sister, do you love him? You know what she said? In spite of everything that he does to me, I love him. Then I opened the word of God. Who loves my sister? Would uh, suffer? Would stand everything? You are going through this? You are suffering? Because you, 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 my sister, loves. Who loves, believes in everything. And now I ask you, do you believe that God can do? Give a blessing to your husband? Deliver him from this addiction? Do you believe that one day he can be here in the church being a deacon and conducting a period of praise? You know what she answered? I believe. God asks simple things, then you just have to believe. Then I told her, who loves can wait for as long as is necessary. And I tell you, waiting is not something easy. I am, to this day, I have trouble having to wait for things. Whoever loves, wait. I, I waited with confidence in the Lord. That sister, you have to wait because God does His work on His time. Whoever loves can withstand everything. If you didn't love, then you would not have withstood all this. And she had uh, told me in confidence that earlier he, they had separated and she gave her life to the Lord. And the Lord told her that she should receive him back because the Lord had a blessing for, for his life. See, my sister, there is a promise. And now, a few months later, not years, just a few months, that man had an experience with God. And on the day of his baptism on the waters, the church, the church around him, they all cried. This man became a, uh, became a deacon in the church, and today he is in the glory, praising the name of the Lord. One day I met but the sister now bringing the message to a close my sister was it, was it worth to wait and suffer and she answered oh was well worth it the Lord asks simple things in order to perform great wonders for us and the Lord is said that there is a sister is going through a very difficult trial in her family and she's been she's been asking to her the Lord for mercy because she has already run out in her personal resources and the word of the Lord for her is this on this battle you don't have to fight I fight for you and sister and 
the Lord did this for this sister. Rest in me and see the deliverance that is on my hands. Following your victory, I'd like to remind you that I'm already finishing. The Lord has not called us to be defeated. He called us to be victorious in His presence. The Lord has also shown in a spiritual gift, shown a man that has a characteristic, has kept old objects like pictures or a few other things that brings to his memory, to his past, and his origin. He has given too much worth to this, but he needs to give worth to the call that the Lord has done to him. Give worth to being the presence of the Lord, to give worth to the Word, to give worth to the experience that you already had with him, with God. Because those experiences are not going to allow you to grow older. And one of the greatest risks in, in the life of the servant, one of them, one of the greatest risks is the absence of gratitude. Because when we are thankful to God, I'm blessed for Him even more. There's another danger to, to make God's things like common things. It's not something that is common here we come to get refreshing power renewal of the faith and fellowship in order to continue his presence and now there is the lord has revealed that there is a woman that is here the lord has given her an experience to see things in her life in a different way like the, the use of the pleading of the blood of jesus in her life my brother this is a resource a, of grace that we need to have in order to be victorious in the presence of God. Make use of this and you will see God blessing your life in a mighty way. We're going to stand up and bring the Sabbath to a close. And after this period of prayer, whoever is here, then desire prayer. Right man where you are, we're going to towards you. We're going to pray for your life and God will bless you. Lord, we ask you we will praise you and give you thanks because you have truly required of us what is simple. But you have offered to us wonderful things. Yes, you have poured out upon us blessings, glorious blessings. Blessed be your name, Lord. Because here is a place where our heart is filled with peace, where there is renewal of our faith and of the joy of the Lord, so that we may continue on this walk. Bless each one of our children tonight. Receive the service. We give everything to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may rest upon us, my brethren, now and until the return of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We are here at your disposal. Disposal of the brethren, the ones who especially honor us with your visit in order for us to pray for your life, whatever is your need. Raise your hand one of your hands so that we might identify you. We're going to go towards you and we're going to pray for your life. <laughs> 